Week one, college football officially in the books, and we are breaking down some top storylines heading in to week two. RJ, I want to start off with the Ohio State Buckeyes. They took down Indiana 23-3, to took care of business, but to me, hardly looks like a team that is ready to compete for a national title. They play Youngston State this week, which should be a win for them, but I think a lot of people would be reassured to see some improvements on offense. Thoughts? Yeah, they absolutely have to throw down against, you know, an FCS opponent. There's no doubt about it. And look, I think they will. I think a lot of what happened on Saturday, honestly, Claudette, was about Indiana on defense. They revamped that defensive front through the transfer portal. And it's pretty clear that they made some some pretty good bets on some players that they brought in. I mean, it, you know, I spoke to somebody uh, with the Indiana program who said, and I quote, we finally look like a power five front. And they're right, you know, I think. But charitably for Ohio State, Ohio State's defense looks pretty good, too. You know, Indiana only scored three points, were never really a threat to really win that game. They were just kind of hanging around because of their own defense. So, look, I think Ohio State's got a few weeks here to figure it out uh, before the big one against Notre Dame, and I think they can. I would expect to probably see more uh, of backup quarterback uh, in this game. He only played four snaps uh, against Indiana. It was close. You know, I understand why they kind of stuck with Kyle McCord, the starter, but I expect kind of a more QB rotation in this game. Well, probably the biggest game of the week was Colorado versus TCU. Colorado upsetting TCU in Texas. Shore Sanders, Travis Hunter, both having incredible games. I think now the question for Colorado is can they sustain this momentum throughout the season and they get another test this week against Nebraska? Yeah, look, Nebraska's not going to score 50 points, but Nebraska is going to play better defense than TCU. That I can guarantee. Does it shorten the game? Does it, you know, are they going to Nebraska? Is Nebraska going to defend, you know, Dylan Edwards out of the backfield like TCU wasn't able to do? Uh, is Nebraska going to take Colorado seriously like TCU did not do, according to their head coach, Sonny Dykes? Uh, you know, I think Nebraska will come into this game with a significantly different blueprint and a significantly different game plan than TCU did. And I think it's going to create a game that's maybe a little less exciting than kind of the shot for shot, especially second half that we got between TCU and Colorado. I think Nebraska's blueprint is gonna be, we gotta slow this game down, try to play keep away, try to keep the ball out of the hands of Shadur Sanders, Travis Hunter, and, and all those really, really talented skill players. Two teams that really underwhelmed in week one, LSU and Clemson. Uh, LSU losing a, a really good Florida State team, which is something that we saw this week. And then Clemson absolutely getting like crushed by Duke 28 to seven. What are you hoping to see from these two teams in week two? Like serious improvements needed. Yeah, you know, I think LSU is a little bit of a different deal than Clemson. I think LSU is just less of a finished product. You know, three running backs out, best corner broke his leg in camp. Uh, best defensive lineman still yet uh, was suspended for the game. I think LSU can be a, a, a bit closer to the best version of themselves as the season goes on. As far as Clemson's concerned though, Clemson's got some problems. Clemson's got some problems, uh, especially at the skilled player uh, positions. Will Shipley, the running back, explosive, but he's about all they've got. They were not able to get vertical in the passing game at all, at all on Monday night. And it's a serious problem. Uh, Kate Klubnick is a young starter at quarterback. I, I think he's got some promise, but he needs some help at receiver. I think Clemson's defense is still good enough to get where they want to go, but on offense, they just need more juice. They need more explosiveness, or this Clemson team is, is not going to get back to the college football playoff. Big game coming up this week, Texas versus Alabama. We're going to give our picks. I'm taking Alabama because... Well, for starters, I never want to bet against Nick Saban. They're also playing in Tuscaloosa. And I really liked what I saw from Jalen Milrow this past week. Who are you taking? I think I'm also on the tide. Texas played Rice on Saturday. And in the first half, some concerning signs for Texas, especially on the offensive line. Rice was able to get a lot of tackles for loss in the first half and be really disruptive. That's not really what you want. I think Alabama is going to come in with this blueprint that they're going to try to run flat over Texas, uh, especially on offense in the run game. Two tight ends, Jalen Moro toting the rock, uh, and I think Alabama will be able to execute and get it done in the big one on Saturday night.